Hey guys, it's Adventure, welcome back to the channel, and I am super excited today to show you this wonderful little aircraft. Now this is Ant's aircraft, the Havilland DHH2 Tiger Moth. Yes, the beauty of the Tiger Moth. Uh, phenomenal aircraft. Uh, from the 1930s, a British biplane designed by Geoffrey de Havilland, built by the de Havilland Aircraft Company. It was used by the RAF as a primary trainer. Now, it was meant to be for the uh, basic, basic training, and... They had them in other capacities, including maritime surveillance, anti-invasion prep. Some even did some work as light bombers. They were terrible as that, though, but they they were outfitted to function as it, even if they were never used. Now, they were used by the RAF into the 50s when they were replaced by the Chipmunk, and they've mostly entered civilian operation, and there are a lot of them still flying around today. Now, this aircraft is a biplane. It has no actual brakes. There's no starter. The control stick is basically just a stick. This is a flying goggles and flying helmet and scarf job. And I am very, very happy to see this into the sim. When Ant released his first aircraft for 2020, I was super excited to see this come to the sim. A wonderful aircraft. It, it responds incredibly well to control inputs. It's easy to fly. Uh, the wings are incredibly forgiving and it stalls as low as 25 knots uh, with power. It's benign in all conditions, like stalling and spinning. Uh, this is some adverse yaw, which requires input quite a fair amount, but it has really good, easy-to-fly characteristics, but it's hard to fly well, which is the hallmark of a good trainer. Now, this aircraft is equipped, I believe, and I could be incorrect with this one, uh, with a Gypsy Major engine, a four-cylinder air-cooled inverted inline piston, uh, 130 horsepower or 97 kilowatts of power with a two blade fixed pitch propeller. Now she has a cruise speed of, hold on to your horses here, 58 knots, a maximum speed of 95 knots, and a range of about 260 nautical miles. She can get to about 13,000 feet, that will take a long time, uh, and she could carry eight 20 pound bombs. Not kidding, that's a real thing. Without further ado, as the sim decides it wants to choke all the time, we're seeing things clicking. Don't worry, I will show you why that is in a second. So, what do we have? I've got my controller. Why am I using my keyboard? A beautifully constructed model, and we'll take a look at the other options we have in a moment. And some of these features here will be very useful for us in a second. You'll see why. Because we have to prime and start this thing outside the aircraft. Welcome to 1930s design influence. Not just influence, design. Ooh, bolts. Beautiful ribbing there on the wings. Ribbed for every aviator's pleasure, in this case. Now, I had put my custom tail number on this one as G Cupper, but uh, apparently it's not showing on the livery, so you won't get your custom livery showing. It does, however, have in the tablet functions on board uh, the ability to use nav, or COM1, COM2, and uh, transponder. So you can fly it on VATSIM. Ooh, hello. What was that? Ah, yes, the Pito. Delightful. Let's go in the cockpit and take a look. Of course, huge pile of liveries here, as you can see, and they are very, very much busy. Okay. So things are behaving themselves somewhere in the cockpit. I'm not sure why this is flying around. It's to do with having a particular switch set in my aircraft. I'm not sure what that is, but we will find out. It's to do with... Which one of them is it? It's an avionics switch. It's using that map to the background, and I'm not sure why. Could you behave yourself? We'll be right back, actually. I'm sure it's one of the switches I actually have set here, so we'll be right back. Okay, so after much fussing, it turns out that having uh, various things mapped to avionics buttons in the sim doesn't agree hugely with this aircraft. And, of course, we have the option for the area GPS here, of course, which is lovely to have. How do I go back on you? There we go, map. That's easy mode. Aircraft offers, offers numerous modes in regards to that, which is useful. Now, of course, we have a tablet functionality here, and this is the cool part. So we have hide, show. Oh, God, don't, don't show that. Exterior only, which gives us two other pilots. Do we get other options there? So smart will show versus interior or exterior. Oh, that's a GPS. I'm being extremely stupid. So that will show it depending on where you're sitting, basically. So whichever seat you end up going into, it'll appear. Now, we can open the doors with the lever or with 
a button here. Now we've got the other doors on the other side of the aircraft, of course, it has these latched door sections on the side. Now we have airspeed to display for us. In fact, if we look here, now uh, we can change the front and rear altimeter type to modern or retro. Height, modern, different variations there. Rear airspeed, modern in knots. We've got vintage knots. We've got vintage miles an hour. We have modern knots. Really useful options. So we can change our windshields from clean to dirty. We'll leave it dirty for the day. Persistent auto fuel, we can have that turned on. Uh, mouse zones for the front cockpit we can do. We can do rolling resistance in terms of on the ground. We'll go for normal. Engine realism, we'll leave it as normal. I don't want to blow the plane up today. We are, however, going to start here properly, though. So cool little preferences here. Now we have other pages as well, including exterior preferences. So hiding and showing pizza covers. We'll put those on for now. Pilot type English, Australian. Ooh, must be Australian today. I'm going to annoy a lot of people with this accent because it's terrible. We can even put a wheel on the back if we want to. Got an English Vinjury, we've got an Australian Vinjury. Windy airspeed gauge. Sure, let's have one of those on. Let's have some straps on the oil tank. Dear God, I'm not doing that again. Wheel cover outer. Let's take that off. Wheel cover inner, take that off. Air intake. Ooh, we'll go for, ooh, modern. Propeller edge on. Prop. Useful to have on. Engine doors. Top cover. Oh, hello. There are lots of options in there. Let's go take a look outside for a second. So we've got a baggage section open there. The entire engine exposed, which is very vintage if you want to go for the wild approach to things. Oh, hello. Stupid cameras being strange. Pizza covers. We put our parking brake on. That gives us chocks. So lots of cool options there. We'll take the parking brake off. We will reset to defaults. Let's click that there. So we'll leave the pilot as English. I don't really see the point. We'll go with this, a skid for this version because it's the classic, you know? So nice and simple. We'll put the tablet away. Oh, we can move the tablet. <gasps> Ooh, that's cool. How else do I move it? <gasps> Ooh, I can, I can move the tablet around. That's actually kind of cool. You can go away, GPS. We'll turn that off in a second. Um, what else do we have here? We have engine start modes. We have quick starts. We have wheel chocks. Uh, linked magnetos. Uh, fuel cutoff. We will go through all these in just a moment. But there are some other options to take a look at. Now, here's the autopilot. It, basically, someone holding a stick for you. You can do vertical speeds. So you can have a hold of climb or descent and altitude. Um, you can do heading, heading hold, wing level. Useful features. And here's our radios, COM1, 2, and transponder. So great to actually have there. So let's make you go away, and you can go away too. Let's start the aircraft, shall we? So this is a more, more much gl more glamorous control stick than I've actually experienced in a Tiger Moth myself. I have flown one. Uh, I'm not an expert by any means, but that's an auto start there. We're not going to be using that. Uh, we can show and hide placards as well. The one I flew in actually what felt like actually had a broomstick there. Like someone had taken a broomstick, cut the handle off, and stuck it in here. Yeah. There's a lot of variation when it comes to these. Okay, so fuel cutoff will need to be selected, which is down there. Fuel valve, I believe, to be in the off position there, so open for us there. Uh, the mixture will need to be... It may not be operating the same mappings here, so... Why aren't you actually operating? Throttle will need to be cracked. Let's make sure that is set correctly there. Okie dokie. We don't have prop control, of course, so there we go. Mixture is full open for now. Batteries on, which we don't actually technically have in this aircraft. Just an automatic thing for me to check myself. Let's change camera mode, shall we? Now, that's our air intake we can control there. So let's open the engine door here. Where's our, where's our spark plugs there? Where did they hide the primer in this beast? I always forget. It's one of the doodats around here. Want to pull a spark plug out? You can. Where did they go and hide you? There we are. Oh, 
Oh, we could even turn the propeller off. That's a wonderful little feature there. Uh, how do I actually grab this propeller? It's not that clear when it comes to... Oh, we could even turn the spinner on and off. That's actually rather cool. I like that. Now, I never had to start it myself, so this is something I'm trying to learn as I go. Which bit do I grab to make you move? Because it should be, it may be by a control, so we may just do this in the cockpit, and I'm not entirely positive on how to do this. We'll quickly view the manual and take a look. There should be a click spot or drag. Now, the engine realism does allow the spark plugs to foul, depending on running under 900 RPM. You'll build up carbon deposits, so you can run the engine at higher RPM to burn off that carbon, and that will sort those modes out for you. I want to do this properly as it's a full simulation of the aircraft, which is lovely to actually have as a feature. So the carb is primed, which we have, manually pulling the propeller. Well, how do I do that? Two-man procedure, obviously, ground crew priming the engine and managing, obviously, with magnetos to be set there. Uh, pulling the prop through clockwise, standing in front of the prop. Okay, so... Aha. There we go. Oh, that's... Now, the real aircraft will not respond to brakes, but the sim one does because flight simulator. It's, uh... That engine sound is glorious. How do I latch you again? Oh, click the door. There we go. This is a lovely little feature here. My gosh, that's fun. Okay. Right, we're ready to depart, I think. So let's take her out for a spin here. Now, you have to be a little bit on your toes when it comes to the Tiger Moth because they're quite a interesting aircraft. And I'm going to have to get pushed back here by ground crew. So while we do that, I'll talk to you about the auto slats. Now, they're on the top of the wing. They can help control ground speed or controllability of the wing at lower air speeds. In this, we have modeling for flaps up. We'll lock them flaps down, unlocks them. See the uh, cable move at the top there? So, realistically, when we're operating on the ground or doing aerobatics, we want those to be locked. We do not want them to be operating. Because otherwise, that can lead to ground loops and other odd behaviour in the air. Very unusual conditions that you do not want to replicate. So, okay, let's get her moving along here. A bit of a longer review than normal. There's a lot to talk about in this aircraft. Obviously, we run a tail skid on an asphalt runway, so this is a pleasant experience. We're here at Donegal and Island. Oh, just somewhere nice to fly. There's some good scenery. Huge visibility in this aircraft, as you can tell. Now, it's not exactly got the most insanely powerful engine, but we still have to be wary of it when we're actually departing and taxiing. Especially once we're uh, taking off, because there will be torque. Okay, you advance the throttle here smoothly. You'll find you can get the nose up relatively quickly. And she's relatively benign early on until the tail comes up. And you get a bit of... Whoa! Da Tiger Moth effect. <laughs> there we go. I am human. Just going to turn around here. A little bit too much. So she bites. That's a good sign. I actually quite like that. The fact that it will bite is rather nice to see. Let's go again. Okay, airspeed is alive. Tail's coming up naturally. Hold the controls here. And we'll just ease her off the ground. And up we go. It is not a fast or <laughs> graceful process. You're climbing out with barely a lot of power in this aircraft. Once you get rid of tail authority, don't push forward on takeoff. <laughs> Turns out it's a lot closer to how the Tiger Moth should behave in real life. It will come off the ground of her own accord. I guess I'm so used to how aircraft in the sim work in terms of tail draggers that you have to lift the tail up sometimes. You have to try and push it onto its main wheels. But just by allowing the Tiger Moth to do what she wants to do naturally, she will come up off the ground for herself. And let's pull the engine back. Again, not a fast aircraft by any stretch of the imagination, but... A delightfully elegant one. She is not quick. 
but she is enjoyable. So this is the dirty glass, by the way, and even then it's not too bad. I quite like it. Now those auto slats can be unlocked at this point, leaving those open to actually deploy as we slow down. If we were doing aerobatics, we'd lock those. It does look so weird to actually see a control stick that's metal with an actual rubber grip on there. <laughs> when I said the one I flew had a broomstick, I literally mean had a broomstick. It was just wood with a little rounded end on it. There's nothing more complicated to this aircraft than that. It's a truly visceral stick and rudder experience. You are essentially strapping on the Tiger Moth and going flying. Uh, we're looking at about 50 knots right now, which is good for us. You don't want to make any sudden control moves in this aircraft. It will not like them. There's often a lot of stick pressure going on with the aircraft and how she wants to behave. That's, of course, our auto slats lock there. Not very complicated in the slightest. We do have trim. It's literally a push-pull situation, so we can actually trim the aircraft, take some pressure off the stick, but it's very manual flight related. I was hoping that was actually modelled in there. So, everything working nice as intended. Insanely good visibility, but it's very windy. If anything, the sound's right. It has that real rattle can sound to it. The one thing I'm missing here is there's not as much wind noise as I actually would like to hear. It should be a lot louder in the cockpit here. It's definitely one where you yell at the other person in the aircraft. There's Donegal off to our side. Look at how fast we're going at a whopping 50 knots. God, this is lovely. Now that's not something that uh, the one I flew in had, the, the compass arrangement on here. It's nice to see it represented in the aircraft as uh, a vintage piece of equipment. We can actually turn the placards off that we don't want to see. Nice to see that though. But we have our stall speeds there. Definitely slower than 40 knots. Climb at 58 and cruise at 75. That's optimistic, I would say. We are getting up to about 60 here, which is about what I'd actually expect of the aircraft. Looking good. So we're flying downwind here at Donegal. We'll turn around and we'll bring her in for a landing. Um, it's very sedate for that. Now, when you are operating an aircraft like this, you let the plane fly itself to an extent. You are controlling it, but you are guiding it where else to go. You don't really force an aircraft like this to go in a certain direction. Now, she will, obviously, but you're barely dealing with an aircraft design that's much beyond the dawn of flight here. It's the 30s, yes, but given that we really only had our first serious aircraft around the First World War, there's a lot of similarities here between that kind of aircraft and this. Um, a lot of it is very much raw aviating, which does give a really beautiful experience. And compared this to the Lionheart Young, uh, Youngman, Booker Youngman, the 131, this is a much nicer simulation, much more rich in terms of features, much more interesting in terms of what you've got, um, way more options in terms of visibilities, customization, liveries. Uh, it's a better visibility from the aircraft and the cockpit. I must say that's much more enjoyable. Speaking of which, there's on a goal. We're on the downwind here, so we'll pull the power back here and start to descend. Drop it down a little bit here. I believe that's the golf course down there. Okay. It gets pretty quiet when you pull the power back on this aircraft. Uh, yeah, that panel just above uh, the pilot's head there is where one of the fuel tanks is. Now, obviously, you don't stop this by cutting off the fuel because this. Quite a lot of fuel in the line from all the way up there down to the engine. See the hose there? Yeah. Uh, got quite a while of fuel. I'd think about a minute of fuel, maybe 15 seconds of full power. Uh, so you would basically turn off the magnetos. So we'd stop the engine. Okay. Look how slow we're flying now. We're basically hovering. Those auto slats will be in effect. Okay. So much more room here. This speed, you could afford to fly a circuit much tighter than you can in any other aircraft. 
Now landing is going to be one of those situations of awareness. You are quite far back in the aft cockpit. You need to look out the side. You need to be able to slip it in for landing so you can see. Um, there are different components to play with here because you're dealing with a much lighter, smaller aircraft and restricted visibility, especially with someone in front of you here. We're so used to looking forward over the nose, that's not really something you can afford to do. Now you will be landing this in a three point. So let's bring around here. The reason I actually chose this livery with the, uh, the yellow underbelly and the camouflage livery is exactly the same as the one I've flown. So let's bring her down here idling at the power. We're still sitting around 50 knots. Let's give her a little kick there so I can see where I'm going. There we go. A little off center here actually. We'll bring the nose around. Keep my head out the side. Landing with your head out the side of the aircraft is definitely an unusual experience, but one you can adapt to. And you're going so slowly, it won't really matter. Let's watch I screw this landing up horribly. We have an actual uphill runway here, so... We're ballooning a little bit, let's keep the flare. There we go. There we go. Now, we don't have brakes, obviously, in the real aircraft, not in this version, or any version, so grass is usually optimal because it gives you much more rolling resistance. We hold our controls full aft. I'm actually going to lock those slats in place here on the rollout so a gust doesn't catch us. This literally embodies the adage, like a lot of old British uh, high-wing monoplanes and biplanes, of a tail dragger is not landed until you're in the bar and it's in the hangar because it will escape from you when it's windy because being so slow and having such a huge lifting surface it will catch a gust there we go and we are down now i'm actually gonna taxi off onto the grass here because it feels so rude having a tiger moth on asphalt especially with a tail skid so let's get onto the grass much more comfortable this which much more feels like the natural environment of a tiger moth um a little bit longer video than usual i've been enjoying reminiscing here and faffing around with this aircraft but she is a beautiful rendition, she really is. Um, from the fact that nearly everything is functional, even more so than the original version, uh, I was a little bit of kerfuffling with uh, my settings in terms of having avionics cross-mapped. Uh, it's a lovely little aeroplane. Look, if I press the avionics button, everything's going to start spamming. Whee! Whee! <laughs> oh, gosh, love that. Mag's off. Engine stops. Fuel cut off. Off. Whew. That is lovely, I must say. That is a lovely little aeroplane. Absolutely beautiful to fly. Again, not that experienced in them. Had the opportunity to fly one. It feels... I can smell the aeroplane. Is that the best way to describe it? I can smell the tiger moth. <laughs> it's that mixture of wood and oil and canvas and mostly oil and fuel. Lots of oil and fuel. Oh, wow. Now, it's a very visceral, giddy experience being in an old biplane. And this, in the sim, I think is the closest we've had yet. By far the closest we've had yet. It's got the most realistic behavioral characteristics. Um, even compared to what I expected it to do in the sim. Because I expected it to need help to get the tail up and actually really pull itself along. But that caused it to bite me. Allowing it to do what it wanted to do and fly itself off the runway. It really behaved. And the customization options are glorious. It's a wonderful little thing. Cost 20 euros over on uh, Sim Market. And I'm not sure what other retailers will have it. But I would highly recommend you get this. Even if you don't fly very often. It is definitely the biplane to have. Unless you like Stearman. At which point you might be American. Thanks for watching. Bye, chaps. And chapettes. <laughs>